John Gong joins me now to discuss this phone call between Beijing and Washington. He's a professor of economics at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing, and he happens to be in Herzliya, Israel. So, John, what is your readout on this phone call? I find the timing rather interesting, as G7 leaders meet in Britain, where China is expected to feature prominently. Yeah, I think this time is quite interesting, but it's it's not so surprising because, uh, as I can remember, this is the third minister level uh, telephone calls between China and the United States. Previously, the Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of Commerce, have talked to uh, China's counterparts in, in, in a few days ago. Um, so um, I think there's a range of issues they have covered. It's quite interesting to see that the. Uh, you know, the agenda has been uh, quite broad, but judging from the statement from the um, State Department. Um, and I think it's also quite interesting to see that the uh, official press releases from respectively the two governments, um, I won't say are different, but they cover different things. I'm pretty sure, you know, they talk about the same issues, but uh, the way they present it are quite different. Well, elaborate a little bit more on that. What do you mean by that? Um, well, I, I guess China, and it's very clear, China, you know, emphasized very much the importance of the issue of Taiwan uh, and also um, the issue of, uh, you know, multilateralism based on the United Nations Charter as opposed to a small group of people. I think, that, you know, uh, uh, Council, uh, Councillor Yang has been very uh, explicit, uh, you know, very clear that he's pointing to uh, this gathering right now. It's taking place in England. Um, and uh, on the United States side, uh, uh, you know, mentioned uh, Hong Kong, mentioned um, the Uyghur issue, uh, the Uyghur issue. I think it's quite disappointing to me that uh, uh, he is still using the word genocide. It's very unfortunate. Clearly, it is not a genocide. I mean, using this word is an insult to the word genocide, in my view. Total, total disinformation, misinformation. Uh, Biden is expected to rally allies uh, behind a common position when it comes to China, John. Will he be able uh, to have that unity and consensus uh, with more aggressive U.S. approach? I mean, Germany, for one, has shown uh, very little appetite for a conflict with Beijing, for a new Cold War, if you will, with Beijing. I think, um, well, first of all, I think we, you know, we have to wait until uh, we see uh, this common communique they've been talking about, and you know, what are the exact wordings of that. Second, I think, um, you know, there's some indication that uh, I would say uh, Joe Biden has achieved some of his objective. Uh, for example, your program has just shown that, the, you know, the spokesman uh, woman said that uh, to some extent, you know, it's, it's mostly directed towards Russia, but to some extent, uh, partly towards China as well for this so-called value-based uh, multilateralism. I mean, I, I think we can debate about what does it mean by value-based multilateralism, but, uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that they've mentioned Russia and, and somehow they mentioned China uh, in a partial way. So I think from that perspective, uh, Joe Biden appears to have achieved uh, some of its objective. But I, I think even though this, you know, a, a unified uh, uh, Stance affected as the, in the communique, uh, the actual implementation is an entirely different matter. I think there are still plenty of room for uh, several European countries to have quite close uh, relationships with China, uh, particularly Germany, uh, and, uh, and 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 for example, Italy as well. Um, so uh, so we we'll have to see. All right, we will see indeed. John Gong, thank you very much.